two of this video uh, mini series. Uh, this part I'm going to go through testing the recovered parts. Um, so please like and subscribe and tell your friends, help me grow this channel. Thank you. Okay, so our first thing we're going to test is, um, I suppose, the inductor. Um, how can you test the inductor? Well, I've got this little um, Chinese tester thing, um, and I can pop, pop the inductor into there somehow. Um, and you can put it on here and see where it comes out at. Um, uh, 0 0.98 uh, microenvy. Um, yeah, so how accurate that is, I don't know. Let's have a look at a proper meter. Put some light on there and see what this says about it. There we go. Stop. Okay, so the, the electrolytic capacitor test. Um, you can use one of these Chinese things. Um, you can get it to go in there. Yeah, it's in. So uh, the electrolytic capacitor on this is going to come out at what? ESR 9.8, which is what you'd expect for a capacitor of that size. Um, but let's try with a professional meter, the Mastic, and see what that comes out at. I'll switch on the backlight again so you can get a see so on here i'm gonna wait to let it go into i'm gonna check change the function in the capacitor mode uh, so for the esr and the frequency on these capacitors should be around about 100 hertz 100 to 120 hertz is a good so 26.8 which is good as well for a small capacitor around about, around about 30 for these is good so that's good um, as you can see with an with an ordinary multimeter, I've got a great capacitor range on this meter, but you can't check ESR. So on this is what's it come out at. Kind of grab the damn thing. This one comes out at three point three micro. So it's, it's, it's in the range, 2.2. I think it says it on there, 2.2. I can't see it from here. Uh, what else can we test? Um, the one beauty of the... Uh, uh, to test transistor, that's where these things come in beautifully because they give you um, all the dimensions of it. Uh, this is really where it's at its best, really, testing transistors. Um, so it's got any MOSFET. Uh, so gate one is, is uh, leg one, leg two is the drain, and leg three for the source. You can see it's got all the information there. For that, it is these things are perfect. Um, you can't do that with a multi, you can test to see if the drain gate opens, but that's all you can do. Um, though, those are perfect. Um, so the 555 timer comes next. Um, you should have a screen up now with the circuit of the 555 timer um, or oh, 555 timer tester and this is the little tester I put together um, and stick a battery on it here if it'll go, it doesn't want to go on so this is a little 555 tester I came up with um, there's a little notch in here so you can get a good view of that um, there's a little notch on this uh, thing and there's a little notch in the transistor there so when I put it to in notch to notch and it should flash if the if the 5 5 timer is good if it's good and if it's inserted properly Oop. popped out again doesn't want to stay in there does it for some unknown reason There we go. So that circuit is uh, a great circuit for testing these. So that one's working. I know that one of these is dead. Which one it is, I don't know. There's another one. So that's a good 555 timer. 
um, the last one, which has got to be dead because I know there's one that's dead. Let's see the results of the um, 555 tester that's dead. Oh, we can see, there we go. It's doing nothing. That is dead. It, even the capacitor is taking forever to drain off. So there you go. That's that's a good way of testing your 555 times. So it's a simple little circuit. So here's the diode. Um, I'm using a UF4006. Um, you can see by the uh, diagram there, this one uh, goes 800 volts. Uh, so it, it's the difference is minimal. Um, the 407, 407 is a thousand volts. We're going. Up, it should be around 120 or something in this LED tester. So it, it's plenty. It's enough. You could possibly go with a 405 or even a 404. Probably get away with that. Um, it just depends on the inductor you're using, I suppose. Um, how to test the diode? Um, well, you can see I've got my trusty Fluke 79. Um, so I put it into diode mode. And I guess it's similar for different types of multimeters. Um, and I put the test lead across it and I get a voltage drop of 469 or 0469. Um, the other way it shouldn't conduct. So if I turn it around, you should get nothing. And there we have nothing. Um, as a matter of interest, you could put that in the Chinese tester. But not really worth the bother of doing that. Um, I have another multimeter here. Um, it comes up with the same results. Well, that's the end of this video. Um, if you liked it, uh, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. Look forward to part three.